guys, I'm Laura Vitale, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you an updated version of my raised short ribs. And I have to say, anyone I've served these to says that they're the best short ribs ever, and I think you'll agree. And the best part is, you really do, you do need a very few ingredients, but it makes the short ribs themselves shine. Um, it's just phenomenal. And I think it's a, also a really great main dish for this holiday season. If you are not doing a traditional Thanksgiving uh, or you're maybe doing smaller gatherings with smaller groups of people, I think this is a great one. I talk about this a lot on my Instagram, like my favorite fall meal right now to entertain with is my short ribs potato au gratin, potato gratin, a nice salad, roasted veg, and my apple and almond tart that I know you are loving. So let me show you what you'll need. Not much, but I am telling you, it is amazing. So you need some short ribs. These are beautiful, really beautiful um, beef short ribs. You can see they're about, I would say, I would say about two by three, uh, and they're fabulous. They are absolutely gorgeous. Lots of marbling, lots of fat. It's gonna render, it will be fabulous. You need some onions, lots of salt and pepper, garlic, tomato paste, really good red wine, a red wine you wanna drink, not something fruity, but something dry and really rich and wonderful. And you're gonna need some fresh thyme and some uh, beef stock. With a little bit of oil to sear, that's it. There's no carrots, there's no celery. I don't wanna take this, I feel like if you're adding celery and carrots, it can take it into a little bit of a stew, territory and I don't want that. I want this to really shine. I want the beef to really shine and I don't want it to, I don't want anything else with it. Just trust me, serve the veggies, roast it on the side like I do and it's fabulous every time. So you're gonna season all sides of your ribs. Um, I actually like using fine salt for this. I really like coarse kosher salt um, when I cook, but here's what I have found when you sear. I have found that kosher salt kind of gets stuck to the bottom of the pan and I take some black pepper. I like to coarsely grind it and then just kind of dust it on each side and it looks like there's not a, a lot of seasoning but trust me you're always looking for about a teaspoon or so per pound of meat so uh, by the time you're done seasoning, by the time you're done seasoning all sides it's going to be perfectly seasoned so I'm just going to flip it to the other side and I'm just gonna continue to season until all four sides are done. And I've got my Dutch oven coming to temperature with some olive oil. And I have also my oven preheating to 325 because I'm gonna go ahead and bake these right into the oven, low and slow for hours. You can also do this on your stove top. I just like to put it out of the way, it makes the whole house smell good. And I don't have to worry about stirring it or the bottom burning or anything. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in, put them uh, meat side down versus bone side down because the bone isn't going to do a whole lot so I just leave that for like the end part of the sear. You see that? That's what you want. Do not put them all in there at once because you will be steaming and not searing. So I'm going to go ahead and sear all sides of my short ribs. So important. Keep your, keep your heat level between a medium and a medium high. Because if it's too high of a temperature, you'll just burn it. What we're trying to do is really develop a beautiful crust because that is what's going to also infuse into your salt, into your mixture, and just give it beautiful, rich flavor. So give it time. I'm going to wash my hands, grab a clean plate to transfer them to, and chop my onion. Last one to come out. A little tricky one. Pick up. I'm actually going to turn the heat off. Look at the color on these short ribs, okay? I know everyone loves a slow cooker. I love the ease of a slow cooker, but even if you're slow cooking, which is what we're gonna be doing essentially, you need to sear your meat. You're getting so much flavor that you would be missing out on and your dish will not come out the same if you don't sear, it just won't. So what I'm gonna do, there's a lot of fat that's rendered, okay? I don't want this fat. Um, as the, beet, the short ribs continue to cook, they will continue to give out more fat and therefore more flavor. So it's really kind of unnecessary at this point to add all of that fat in. So I do take it out. Um, I do leave back any of those little brown bits because they're all, all really good. So I'm gonna leave those back and I'm gonna hit this with a bit more olive oil. I'm gonna turn the heat back on, not much because the pan's already really hot. A bit more olive oil. And then what I'm gonna do is add my onion 
and my garlic. The garlic, I just literally, some of the really big cloves I cut in half, otherwise I would leave them whole, and I just chopped my onion. These two are basically going to melt into my sauce, so I don't feel the need to chop them any smaller or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just saute my onions. And now I'm gonna add a touch of salt here, but aside from this salt and the salt that we used on our short ribs, I'll be adding beef stock, which is a bit salty, and that's it. There's no additional salt going in here, and you will be amazed at the well-balanced flavor from just searing and seasoning your short ribs really well and making sure that your base of onions is lightly salted and then let the beef stock do the rest of the work. So all I'm gonna do is just go ahead and saute these until, I'm just until they cook down a bit. These look good enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomato paste. Work that in into your onions. Where's my mop bean? Uh, Work that into your onions, it needs to wake up a little bit. You know what I mean? It's very concentrated, it's very thick. You wanna loosen it up a little bit. You don't have to let it cook for a really long time because remember, this is gonna be cooking for a very long time once everything goes back in the pool, okay? Now you're gonna add some wine, some nice, rich red wine. Now, I know I'll have some questions. Can you do this without the wine? And the answer is absolutely. Just use more beef broth and use more beef broth and you may want to use a can of like a 28 ounce can of chopped tomatoes instead of just tomato paste because you're going to need that viscosity you're going to need that that richness um, that you won't get just from beef stock so add your beef stock in as you know i'll make my own i just use my beef bouillon powder oh goodness look at that and then you're going to go ahead and add your thyme I add it right in like that, just like so. And now you're gonna go ahead and take your beef short ribs and place them into the pot. The important thing is, is that the, it's meat side down so that the bone is on the top because you really want that meat to be as submerged as possible. And as this cooks, it will give out more juices and it'll be incredible. So don't panic. As long as you have them submerged as possible, you will be good. And really, a recipe like this it doesn't really give you, it doesn't really do a whole lot for me to give you a written recipe, which of course I will give you, but the important thing is you need enough liquid so that your ribs are submerged. So if you're doubling the recipe, which you can easily do, you may just need to use a different pot, a bigger pot or two pots, because what you don't want is two layers of ribs. So if I put another layer up here with no liquid, it isn't gonna do me very well, you know what I mean? I need that space, I need that liquid, and this is just absolutely perfect. And any juices that render, that are rendering the bottom of the plate. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and put my lid on, 325. I'm probably gonna leave them in there about three hours or so. I'll check on them periodically, and then I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Uh, we will strain out the fat, which I'll talk to you about that later, and then we'll make a nice gremolata to go on top. Ooh, the eight meal of the season. That's all. My shore ribs are out of the oven. They've been sitting here cooling for about a half an hour or so. Not cooling, but you know, resting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a little gremolata to put on top. I think when you're braising or stewing something for a really long time, it really can benefit for something a little fresh, for something a little um, bright. So we're gonna make a quick gremolata. Gremolata is basically like a little mixture of herbs, garlic, lemon, and some anchovies. Now I'm opting out of the anchovies for right now because I know not a lot of people like anchovies, but I do think that you should add them because they would be incredible. I find that people don't like anchovies uh, when they are not cooked. So in this case, they are indeed not going to be cooked. Um, so a couple will really just go a long way in terms of adding a lot of really lovely like salty flavor. Um, but in a really gentle way. I am going to add them to the ingredient list on LaraInTheKitchen.com simply because, like I said, I feel like it makes a difference. It's show-stopping, it's delicious when it hits the hot shore ribs, incredible. But you can leave it out just like I'm doing today um, and then go ahead and just chop your garlic and a nice big bunch of parsley and then we're gonna go ahead and grate in some lemon zest, and I'm also gonna add a pinch of salt and pepper, because I always want every element 
Those little tender stems, not the very bottom stems of the parsley, those are totally edible. Uh, so just give them a really fine chop. Um, I like to season every element of my dish because then it's very well rounded when you go to eat it. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up and then we're gonna strain the fat and I'll talk you a little bit through um, that. There they are. They smell incredible. Now, let's look in the pot. We can see there's a good pool of fat on the top. Shore ribs are very fatty, so this is a totally normal thing to happen. Shore ribs is one of those things that actually can benefit from being cooked the day before. So here's my suggestion to you. Say you're having this for dinner or like a small holiday or something. Cook these the night before and what happens is the fat will solidify overnight in the fridge and all you have to do is take a spoon and literally scoop the fat right off and then you just throw the whole thing in, in a low oven at 300 for like an hour just to heat everything through and they're perfect. But since we are going to be serving these the same day that we are making them, we have to strain off all that fat. And I feel like if you just stand here with a spoon, it's not gonna do the job because once you see how much fat has collected and rendered, you will be in shock. So take all of your shore ribs out, which by the way, at this point, they are gonna be like, look at this. I mean, I'm literally not even trying. See that? I'm like falling apart. So, all right, so my short ribs are in here. I'm using a shallow pan because I am not gonna go out and buy a specific shallow bowl to put anything in. So make do with what you've got, be creative. Um, and I just use a shallow pan because it's also really beautiful. So my short ribs are in here. I'm gonna separate the fat because there's a lot of fat that renders from short ribs, which is what I was saying. It really does benefit from being cooked the day before because it solidifies it and it makes it very easy to split, right? So here's what I'm doing. I'm adding all of my juices in a fat separator. Typically a fat separator will have a screen on the top that will catch all of the pieces of onions. I, in this case, want the pieces of onions, but if you don't do this, they will clog. Uh, so you have to make sure you do it. My child runs through my kitchen and a lot of my things go missing, like the top to my fat separator. So I just do this with a sieve or an implement like this. So all I'm going to do is just strain all of my liquid in here. I want these beautiful, soft, thick onions and garlic. So I'm gonna put them into the good bowl that we're going to serve with our short ribs. And then once I'm done all this, I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll separate all of it. So you can clearly see where the fat and the sauce has separated. We don't want the fat. So when you go to dump it out, the little teeny tiny bit in the front is always fat, but then you're just gonna to continue to pour and then you will see, I'm gonna do this on camera with you so that you can see, but you will see where you're running out of your goods and it's gonna to start to turn to fat and we don't wanna add any more of the fat. So I leave about yay behind. Even if it's a little bit of the juice, it's fine. I would rather it be that way than to risk adding too much fat into my dish because then it just, it's not pleasant, you know what I mean? I'm gonna just go ahead and take my ladle and I do leave some of the onions in and some of the garlic because I think it's just, it thickens everything and it's really beautiful and delicious and really so good, especially over potatoes or gratin or a polenta or anything like that. It's just dynamite. And then you can serve the rest on the side and then you go ahead and you top it with your gremolata that just comes to life as soon as it hits those warm short ribs. I'm telling you, it is the kind of dinner that people will leave your house talking about until they come back again and then until you make it for them again because it's that delicious. It's one of our favorites. I have shared it with you on Instagram already a couple of times this season <laughs> because we've only been having a few people over at a time every few weeks. And it's just a thing everybody kind of like looks forward to, especially if they've seen it on Instagram, they're like, we want those. And they're just simple and they're easy and I love them. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite, but I don't wanna mess with it because I wanna be able to take a nice picture of it. Mm. Oh my word, the meat like literally falls apart and like melts in your mouth. It's phenomenal. You wanna make this for your table, whether it's a special Tuesday night, a holiday, a get together, a game night, what have you. You wanna make this and it's especially great because you can make it the day before and it tastes even better the next day. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. The recipe is on laurainthekitchen.com. I will see you in the next one. Bye.